sit in an industry situation and actually talk back and actually talk about the stuff that matters to you? Uh, not a lot, no. You kind of, it's very rare to be asked to do it. And generally, um, if, you, if you do do it, it's kind of, you know, being an only woman on an all-male panel and you're kind of single there, as, what's it like being a woman, you know, in a band and stuff? So it's nice to kind of get away from that and kind of get your perspective as just, you like there's no mm -hmm. no gender you know what I mean so, so it's kind of a uh, yeah it's very very you get asked your opinion on, on lots of different things you're just kind of it's there's a there's a set few questions you get asked as a band in an interview and that sort of level you know? yeah yeah say like I mean say like you know ladies in terms in terms of kind of headers and in terms of kind of like you know where, where the band are, are at right now you know it's like I mean you kind of released a couple of albums you've toured quite a bit so like you know from your perspective. What's, what's, how does the Irish music industry look this year? How, how for, for a band like Heather's, like, I mean, can you make, are you making a living from music? Is this what you're doing full time? Like, what, what parts of the industry do appeal to you? What parts do you, kind of, what parts do you appeal to you? Um, firstly, I think the, you know, the music industry in Ireland is thriving at the moment. There's so many great bands coming out of Ireland and doing well and touring abroad and, you know, having a great time, which is amazing to see. Um, for us, we're, you know, we're doing it full time. And, um, Um, in that I actually just kind of made a decision to um, get a full-time job this year. Um, I last year released an EP, um, which cost me, I'm actually still paying back uh, the recording costs for that, but doing it entirely myself. Um, and yeah, I just had to kind of make that decision because I've been doing the music thing full-time for a very long time. And I think it got to a point for me where I'm still always going to do it. Um, but I had to kind of just stand back. I was living at home with my parents and I was like, okay, I need to make some changes. So I started working for Halo, the taxi app. Um, I'm also a computer geek. So, um, Were you driving a taxi? Huh? Were you driving a taxi? Sorry? Were you driving a taxi? No, I'm, no, I'm not driving a taxi. No, no, I'm kind of in the background, the technical side of things. But um, yeah, so um, uh, I guess for me, yeah, it's, it's been a lot quieter. Um, but I did play a few gigs around Europe and stuff, and it's a lot different there as well because you get paid um, a lot better for gigs. Um, and I, I think that was the hard part. You know, I found it difficult to. I, I found that I was actually paying to go to gigs. I was spending money, and I wasn't getting anything in return for it. And not that it's about the money. Like you know, I know a lot of musicians say that. For me, it never was. It was always about playing music, and how music makes me feel, and all that kind of stuff. But. Um, after a while, it becomes quite disheartening to not be able to do what you love and make a living from it. Uh, that's what I only ever want to do in my life, and it's hard to kind of get that. It, it's all or nothing, really, you know. Mm. In order to make it work, you kind of have to give up everything, and I guess I got to the point where it's not. So mm. that's been my 2014, very chirpy, but um, yeah. So, but I'm still, you know, I'm working away, I'm still gigging, um, and you know, looking towards doing some new. Uh, material for an album, but it's just looking to, like that's a kind of scary thought because, like I said, I'm still paying off. You know, I still have bills to pay from my previous recording, so yeah, yeah. it's hard to see how that's going to happen. Okay, and, and in, like in Sing Quest you lies. I mean, I saw you playing down at the Mountain Dew Festival in Croom uh, in July, and that was a really cool festival. Uh, like, in your Hurley's house, you know. So, like, I mean, how has your year, year been? What's your year, year been about? My year. Um, Maybe not as eventful as Louise's, 
and a bit more cheerful than <laughs> I made mine sound terrible. I'm sorry, it wasn't that bad. Like I think you were you were you were you were pragmatic about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got to my word. I yeah, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. So I um, I started working with someone and uh, put together an EP and. That brought a lot of excitement and momentum, and I've been able to play it um, for the last six months. And um, I guess that's kind of what my I've just been working on that, yeah. working on a new sound and um, playing festivals like Mount Dew, which kind of it was a strange one to play because I looked at the lineup and I was just like, it's so small, it's so kind of not I don't want to say exclusive, but kind of is. And and I looked at the lineup and I was like, these are like some of my favorite bands, and I get to play with them. So. Um, that was a real highlight. Yeah, okay. So now, now that you've all kind of opened up your, opened your mouth, so you've all kind of spoken, so you've got to feel the room. So like, let, let's kind of, like, I suppose, these are the more general questions that you can all kind of jump in and answer. Do you think, basically, like, and you can, t t can start with this, do you think, you know, the Irish people, like, I mean, Irish kind of, like, I suppose, society, has a regard for musicians? Or do we kind of, like, look at more musicians in some kind of way as glorified buskers standing in a corner playing a couple of happy tunes? I'm just kind of fascinated about this kind of feeling about what we think about musicians. Leanne, yeah, you're nodding your head there. Yeah, well, um, I do find that it can be difficult. I, I actually feel like I'm going to be really depressing. I'm just <laughs> no, 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 all the really no, negative no. side of things. I'm obviously in a bad mood. I'm really sorry. Um, no, like I, I, I think Dublin's great. I, I, I think Ireland is fantastic. I, I think that people really do love music here and really appreciate it to a certain extent. But I do find that there is um, an attitude out there where you know you find when you're playing like okay, so I'm an acoustic act a lot of the time. Sometimes I play with a band and sometimes I play solo acoustic and I find there's a big difference when I'm playing a lot quieter music and um, you start to notice that people are talking over you at gigs and I don't even notice it just on my own gigs. I notice that at gigs I go to when I'm trying to enjoy like watching a band or whatever um, and it's my biggest pet peeve in the scene that I've discovered really and that's it. you know when you go away somewhere else um, to like Germany or something and you play a gig. Um, I don't know if you guys have experienced this as well. Like, I mean I think everyone has um, you find that when you go, like in Germany, for instance, because I was there recently enough, um, you can hear a pin drop, and even though they've never come across you before, like they listen and they're really polite about it, and it's like this lovely um, experience. But you don't really get that as much, I find. Do you think? Do you think that's just the fact that, like, so this this is something I had a conversation with someone about in Kinsale last weekend like a very well respected artist, and he kind of said the main problem with Irish audiences is the fact that most Irish venues are for drinking, not for music. Yeah. That's very true, I think, yeah. And I think as well, it's kind of, there's a, there's a kind of a, an attitude sometimes I feel that, you know, uh, people won't go and pay the five hundred to a gig to see four bands that they don't know. But they'll go and pay 70 quid to go and see a big gig somewhere. You know, that kind of way. And I feel like there's that sort of attitude here sometimes. And I think, like you said, in Germany, like, it, it feels to me, like we played in Berlin, and there was people there having a clue who we were, but they came out to see the show because, they just want to hear music. It doesn't matter whose mouth is coming out of or whose guitar is coming out of. They just want to hear music. And I think it's kind of like it would be great if that kind of attitude kind of changed. And I think hopefully with with stuff like Cozier and Cold and stuff getting getting such big respect from other countries, it kind of will hopefully start making people look a bit more inward on the music that's here. You know what I mean? Because it's, Music that Ari produces is fantastic, like it really is. You know what I mean? We have a great big treasure box of music, and you know, you can walk down to your local pub and see bands playing <coughs> every night of the week, wherever we are, you know. So. But I think, like, for me, growing up in a different country, when I first came to Ireland, I was blown away by it. I thought they were, I thought Irish audiences were really super warm and embracing, embracing and I guess. Yeah, it's, it's funny to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's funny yeah, to hear that. that. But then I, I do understand when when you play in another country that, you know, I played a show in Germany and it was like that. It was like, do you even know my music? But you're all quiet. It's yeah. beautiful, you know. But I've had beautiful experiences like that here. So, I guess I guess it's it's a hard one. I also re only recently figured out that I don't think some people know that you can hear them on stage because I was at a gig recently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was I did a show with them. Um, we cut corners in Kilkenny and there was this group of like, could have been a hens, could have been something wild, but there were these guys up in the front, in the, in, on the balcony, and they were noisy through my sound. I was like, it's fine, I'm a support act, like whatever, you know. And then they, they came on and they were starting to do their real slow songs and I was like, what is going on like today? Like, 
what's happening here? But when I went up there, they were just having the best time. It was almost like a party. They just didn't realize, I don't think. Because, you know, of course I was like, you're horrible, horrible humans. <laughs> but then I was like, no, maybe not. Maybe they just can't hear. So. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's because we experienced that we're more like aware of it when we're in, you know, gig session. Like, I don't know if that's the point. Yeah. yeah. They, they, like, I mean, just to mention this was some kind of like bars and kind of like, what guys talk about, people at the party and all that, you know? I mean, one thing that's been kind of like very, very forceful in the last couple of years, and all you are, as artists have experienced this, is the presence of, of, of drinking brands, like right, big drink brands like Heineken or Guinness Day New York. Do you kind of find as artists, you know, like, we start with kind of like, you know, you look like, like, you know, like do, you, do you kind of find as artists that basically, you know, this is something that is, is a necessary evil now, that you have to kind of like be part of this particular conversation? So, I mean, at the same time, I mean, I guess, you know, if there is a big brand or something behind shows you're playing, there's going to be a lot of promotions put into it, and it's possibly going to push it in there further and more people are going to hear about what's going on. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's promoting a, a, a drink, and you're going to have, and you're just, the girls are just talking about here, and, you know, a lot of people drinking, and maybe not the nicest environment to play in, but um, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Though. I don't know. Yeah. Like um, like it is really lovely to be paid for a gig, and I find that when there are brands involved, you do get paid. <laughs> and um, so yeah, that's great. But like you could be playing a really shit gig, like where people are just drinking and talking over you. So it is like catch twenty two, which is better. Like what? What do we really want out of it? And that's the that is the question really. Like I mean, it would be great to have maybe brands that are more. I don't know. Like what would be a more suitable brand to like? Is it, it, it maybe it's not even a case of kind of being more suitable brand? But yeah. It could be like a more sympathetic brand. Yeah. You know? <coughs> That's something I've kind of seen just watch, watching what's going on here in Ireland when it comes to music that a lot of brands just don't really understand what the, where, where, where musicians are coming from at all. And I, it, it's one of those kind of very bizarre things. This is kind of another, another question. And like this is just like talk of talk. This, if this question was up in another area, that's fine. It's like, I mean, the artist seems to be left out of an awful lot of dialogue around lots of things, like both kind of like important things to do with kind of like your positioning in terms of streaming or whatever, but also in little things like, I mean, the, the argument that's been going on for the last year about the death of the album, you know, I have yet to hear an artist being brought into that conversation and like, you know, being, being asked for their opinion on that. Do you think sometimes, you know, that, that like media in particular kind of like, you know, looks upon the artist songs like as a, as a necessary evil? These, these are all devil's advocate questions, by the way. Um, I think the idea of the album is, like, I like to think of something, if you release a collection of songs, like to think that there's a theme to it or there's, you've written, like there's a concept and you've written it as a sort of, um, almost like you have a notebook and you've written something that's happened and then you, you put that out like that. Like a, you know, I wouldn't, I don't really like to um, sort of release an album or an EP with like songs from, that are kind of all over, you know, I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, so I, I feel really sad about the idea of the death of the album because like you're putting it out as a, you know, as a part of you, a whole part of you or something. So I think I think as well, if, if people did speak to musicians, they'd all say the same thing. They'd mm -hmm. all say, well, a lot of them would be in the midst of recording an album or nearly finished recording an album or, you know, that's what we're all working towards, you mm -hmm. know, it's what we do the gigs for and stuff, and we do gigs to get the songs ready to record them for an album. Mm -hmm. And also, like, about the album product, and it's not about the album, so I don't. I think yeah, if you ask a musician, like yeah, yeah. You might, you know. but also like a single implies um, a hit or like a pop, like a radio friendly song or something. And that's a bit sad to think that you, you're just focusing on writing songs like that, you know? Yeah. Because on an album you have so much space. Yeah. It's kind of always been like that in the sense though that you know you're told from you know, if you want to break it you have to write a certain way. Like you know if you want to make it like you have to. Well, I mean, I don't you've know. You've, you've experienced that? Yeah, totally. I mean, I was told I had to dress a certain way, dye my hair. Like, you know, if I wanted to be famous, like, I'd need to get songwriters in. Yeah, it was fantastic. I was like, you know. Um, when I was very young and impressionable, I was about 16. Like, I mean, I was quite young when I started doing it. And um, that's hard to hear, you know, when you're like, in your, you're a teenager and you're still dealing with, like, yourself. And, like, you know, you're kind of going through that angsty phase. And you have all these people telling you that 
you're not okay the way you are. Like. Yeah, it's like it's hard. Um, it's hard going. But um, but that I think that's kind of always been the way. Like you know, the mainstream media kind of has always. I, I mean, I, I don't want to bring it back to like because you know we're four women here. Like, but it does happen. I find a lot with women um, in music that you know, if you want to make it in the mainstream, you have to dress and look and. and be a certain way, but also write songs that fit. Like, so I was told that my songs were too long. Like, I had to cut them short because they would be played on radio and stuff. That's something that you know people do get all the time. Yeah. Um, and that's you know, no one consults the artist about that. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, isn't it the artist who's writing the stuff? You know, the artist who's doing it for whatever reason because they want to be creative and, and do it. And yet, you have all these other people telling you that it's not right. Yeah. So who who decides that? You know. But well, surely, surely that comes down to you yourself, because I mean, this this is something that like you know, this come up in loads and loads of panels and loads of discussions mm -hmm. I had with people over the last year about, about musicians and artists. And like I, I think what, what you do is an incredibly precious thing. You can do something I certainly can't do. I can't play an instrument. I can't write a song. All four of you can do that. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of talent and a skill and a it's something you will have for the rest of your your dying days. You know, until you until you fall over, you you you'll have that with you. But like you know, sometimes I think the artist kind of. You know, forgets the magic because you yeah. often you kind of get. Do you think? Do you think like many of you have been blindsided by the industry? I think it's very easy to get sucked into all of that, and like you know, when you're writing a lot, and especially I know myself and Eddie for the past couple of months, as I said, we're coming towards the end of this album, so I think we've just been writing, 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 and we get so critical of ourselves and get quite down a lot because we're like, oh, this isn't good enough. We need to be like this. We need to be like this, and you know, we just want, you know. You're kind of you get caught up between wanting to write music for the love of it and music that you enjoy writing, but at the same time, like I guess wanting to do well and wanting mm -hmm. people to hear it, people to like it, and then um, being able to write music that will allow you to tour around the world and you know do the things you want to do. And um, it is, it's kind of like it's very frustrating and it's kind of like it's heartbreaking at times because. But, but, but is it is it not a case maybe that we use it like and, and this this is interesting because question a lot of you that. Maybe the question's been asked the wrong way, you know, you know, you're kind of going, yeah, you want to make music for, for yourself, but also you kind of want to continue the success you've got. There's a, there's a quote from Dan Snell from Carol who interviewed last week, he's a great quote about his new album, it's a beautiful new album called uh, Our Love, and it's basically about the love he has with his wife, his kids, his friends, his family, but also for his audience as well, because he kind of pointed out that without the audience buying his last album, Swim, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have the success he has right now. That sometimes maybe the dialogue gets completely twisted, that like, you know, what you just said there is the way many artists think, whereas in many cases, it's like, well, what they're actually trying to say is, we really want to appreciate our audience as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. You want them to, you want them to enjoy what you put out there, you know what I mean? You want to, you want them to, it's kind of, yeah, you want them to, and ha you hope that they like it, you know what I mean? It's kind of, and as well, it's kind of, I always found the kind of, um, People kind of saying like, oh, you have to have the album at this time. You have to, you have to have it done by then. And that bores me. It's like, who is this magical, invisible person who's telling us <laughs> that we have to have the album again? You know, it's kind of like people enjoy your music. They're gonna wait. They're gonna like. They're not gonna be sitting by their post box waiting for the album to come in the door. They're just gonna be like, oh yeah, that album's out next week, or you know, it's out in a month, couple of months time, or whatever. And that always kind of gets me to me. <laughs> it's just that kind of like pressure of going, you have to have it out then. Why? Why do we have to? Can we not spend time and get it right so we're putting out something that we're happy with and we're kind of like, you know, here you go, here here it is audience, like we hope you really enjoy it because you know, we, we took we took time on it. You know what I mean? That's really, that's a really good point even. Like do you kind of feel sometimes though with, with that particular point, this is for all of you, that like often the kind of the, the, the power balance when it comes to musicians and the people around them is often kind of like a bit twisted. As in, you know, sometimes basically you know you might have a manager or an agent or whatever it is, and they're obviously all your employees, but sometimes when they actually when the discussion happens, it it more like seems like the relationship's the other way around. That they're that, like I mean that, you know, instead of you kind of hiring them, they're kinda of like they kinda of like also say, well, you should be you should be really looking that we're working with you. I mean, that's something like, I, I kind of find artists get really worked up about, but they're unable to articulate it in many ways. Yeah, it's kind of like, because essentially at the end of the day, you're, you or your group or yourself in your own, like you're the person that's writing this music and you're the person that's, you know, it's coming out of your brain, you know what I mean? So I don't think, like, I think it's great to be surrounded by people that are going to help you get that music out there to people's ears, you know what I mean? But, I think it gets to a stage definitely where um, 
there should be a kind of a cut off point where uh, you, you're the one in charge, you know what I mean? You're the one that's in charge of your own self and what comes out of your mouth and your brain, you know what I mean? So I think that can get a bit mixed up sometimes though, you know what I mean? But you have to kind of, I guess, try and put your foot down for the people who surround you. And it's tough sometimes because then it's the whole thing of, oh no, you can't say, you can't say that, you can't, you can't stand up for that, so you can't say that, you know what I mean? So you're kind of, because Dublin is so small, and you know what I mean? And there's that whole thing as well, like, you know? That's a really, that's a really interesting point. Would all the kind of like agree with that? That sometimes you, you do find yourself I, I use the word silence. Do you find words, you, you find yourself silence or gagged and not allowed to say what you may be thinking? For various reasons to do with it with the group with within the within the group environment or maybe within the like the, the, the industry around you. Yeah, I think that I have I have done in the past. Um, that's kinda of why I like fired from manager. And Did it feel really cathartic when you that? Yeah, it's great. Um, More bands for <laughs> No, I mean, like, you know, it, it wasn't, it was just that I, I felt like, yeah, I didn't really have much of a voice myself. And um, I needed the freedom to be able to just make my own decisions, you know. Um, uh, there were too many people telling me that what I, what I wanted to do was wrong, you know. Even the style of music I wanted to play or, like, the um, type of songs I wanted to write or whatever, like, I mean. And then it just wasn't fun anymore for me, so. You know, and I think that, that can happen a lot within the industry like that. You know, if you begin to get involved with other people then well it's like working with people in any sort of, you know, environment, like it's 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 like being in the office, you know, working with a team, like you start to have people but it's it's obviously different because you're the person writing songs or whatever, like but um it's the same idea. People try to take control sometimes and if you're not really strong enough to I wasn't when I was younger anyway. Okay, let's turn to kind of more specific. Do you think the Irish media give you give you a proper break? Don't. I'll change it. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Um, yeah, no, I think like I think it's turning around. It's it is turning around. You said something very interesting earlier on. That, like you, you were kind of saying, sorry to cut across you. You 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 said earlier on there like you know. That, like the success, I think it was you said success of kind of bands like Hosier and Codeline, yeah. and me people would take more to it. And I was thinking to myself, do we, do we still need that kind of like that foreign thumbs up and foreign endor endorsement? Do you think so? I think we do. I think we do. And like, I think, I mean, I've been in a band now nearly 11 years, and you kind of get to look at how it changes over those years. And at the start, it was tough, tough to get on the radio, it was tough to get, to get anywhere, to get people to listen to your music. But I think now it's kind of it's becoming more easier because of bands like Hosier and Copeland, because of people going, we want to find the next best thing. And you know, they have that little spark in their head going, right, we're gonna give these cha a chance on the radio because I believe that they are gonna be big. You know, and you kind of get people looking looking to the Irish music scene a bit more for their for a bit of inspiration, you know. And I definitely de I definitely noticed over the years a big turnaround on Irish radio with playing Irish music, you know, and it's kind of, it's still not there yet, I think there still could be a lot more support for new Irish bands, for new Irish music, but I think it's getting there, I think it's going in the right direction, and I think it's because of people are realising that we produce great music, you don't need to look to America or England, you just look right, right inside there and you find something you like, you know, I think it's definitely going that way. Louise or Leanne? <coughs> yeah, I agree. I think, you know... This is I, great. This is fantastic. Media is fantastic. <coughs> I think in some ways at the same time it's nice. You kind of want um, Irish bands to be able to stand up against the, you know, the UK artists and American artists and be up there with them and just as good and, you know, not need to necessarily say, well, you need to play us more because we're Irish. It'd be nice to just be, you know, good enough song or whatever to just be up there no matter what but um, I still think there could be a bit more Irish music play on Irish radio mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah I agree I think like I mean I think I think it has a long way to go um, and that thing as well that you were saying like I, we, we, they seem to put Irish music into like a bracket yeah. it's not really like on its own it's just not really 
Yeah, you use it. Yeah, like you find like end of year lists and stuff, and it's like my top ten that Irish. That's being insane. Yeah. So annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Being a student, someone who unfortunately has helped to propagate that, and I hate it. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> this is just. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are albums that come out. I mean, I don't. I don't. You know, choose them because of where in the world the artist is from. Like, I mean, I'll have my favorite albums, and there'll be Irish albums in that. You know, usually and whatever. So I don't like that. I don't like. You know, it's it's just like you know isolating it, pulling it off and saying, this isn't quite as good as the rest of the world, so we'll just keep that in one little box, you know? Yeah. So I think this, I think we really have to just get out of that, like, habit of doing that, and it, not just the media, like, everyone has to stop doing it, and, you know, um, I know, I understand that kind of, you know, Ireland is so small, and we have this community, and we want to all stick together, and, like, you know, look after each other or whatever, but um, I think we need to demand a bit more as well. Yeah. And, like, radio is difficult to get into. They, I, I, I don't know what the, if anyone has the statistics of what they play like, but a few years ago it was really bad. It was like, you know, a really small percentage of Irish music was played. And it would be only in specific shows as well that they'd actually, you know, focus on doing that. Yeah. So. But isn't there something as well with the percentage, I don't know, if I'm right here, with, with the percentage, they have a percentage of Irish music to play, and that includes Tim Lizzy, U2, yeah. <laughs> all this kind of stuff yeah. as well. So yeah. it's kind of like, but if you're going to fill up your percentage with that, then. You know, you know I mean? But like, I, I, like you know, I'm not, I'm not going to defend radio because I me, mean, I, I, I think a lot of problems kind of like, like you know, come from the fact that like radio is so commercial and like they, they need to, they need to be in the audience. For some reason they think basically that like, that all is not really start music. But I look at kind of like I suppose there's things and like I mean I'm not saying this because we're some liberties, but I think like in some kind of like the Mel the TV shows been really interesting to kind of watch because most of the acts have been on that have been Irish. Okay, I know you're all kind of thinking like, well I haven't been Irish, whatever. But, like, <laughs> like, but I'm just kind of looking at stuff that and there, there are efforts being made, you know, like. Yeah. It, it, do you think that's kind of like this tokenism, or is it a case of like maybe that sometimes I'm going to I'm going to question for you like in a second, but just in this particular question because it came to mind. Do you think you know that like you know these shows are just kind of token in some kind of way that like they're kind of like sticking uh, men me on because well she's liberty she's dumb she's dumb she's a woman and putting on all our Irish bands around. Her? Um, I don't know. I think for for RTE anyway, it's a step in the right direction because I don't think they put enough Irish music on their on the channel, on any, either one of the channels. I don't think there's enough, there's enough music shows. Um, it'd be great to have, like, do you remember underneath her? The late night music yeah. shows, yeah. stuff like that. It was brilliant, like, it was brilliant. And even though it was at, like, you know, a terrible time slot, yeah. like, you know, but stuff like that, it's kind of, it's brilliant. And, you know, bringing in an Al Domain, you know, and people, she's endearing, people like her, so people are going to watch the show. People are going to watch the show that don't go away to the pub and see these bands. They're going to switch on the other night because she's a nice girl and they're going to see all these Irish bands so it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's, it's another kind of small step in the right direction. Yeah, last media question. Eliza, as someone who kind of comes from outside Ireland, you know, what, what, what's your kind of saying? I mean, I mean, how does it compare to, like, I know it's a horrible question, but we always ask these questions. Like, I mean, what do you think of our lovely media system? What do you think of our lovely road system compared to where you come from? But, like, in the case of a musician, you know, what do you make of it? Is it good? Is it bad? Or is it one of those things that it doesn't really bother, it doesn't really bother you too much because you do, you're on a separate circuit? Well, the roads are terrible. I'll just start with that. <laughs> I don't drive. Always <laughs> um, well, it's a strange one for me. I feel like I've been quiet for a while because I feel, even though, like, I'm Irish, my parents are Irish, um, but I'm also Australian. Um, I feel a bit wary of questions about it because I automatically feel very grateful of everything that, you know, when I think, you mentioned like media, like Irish media, I think, oh God, everyone's so, like, so kind, They've been so nice, you know, they've helped me or whatever it might be. So it's strange to think about it and maybe if I was trying to make, make music in my own country, I'd be like, Australians, blah, 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 you know. Um, not that I'm fine, you guys are doing that, but um, I never, I never, I think I, I played one or two of the night nights in Australia um, and in the States, so I've never really actually released anything properly yeah. in any other country than Ten Island, and um, I think in terms of, blo like, I mean, radio I feel is, is quite tough, um, but I, in terms of blogs I feel um, that people are quite quite supportive and, and sort of excited, like, you know, especially blogs like Golden Black, you know, they're all, all the lads are all there, like, ready to go, you know. Um, 
Do, does it's it quite enthusiastic. Yeah, it, that, but, like, I mean, that enthusiasm. Do you sometimes think, you know, that, like, this for all of us, that, like, sometimes, you know, how do, how do I put this, because I know it's going to fucking record it. I have to put this in a nice way. Sometimes the media is too nice, that there's, it lacks a critical edge sometimes. <laughs> sometimes there's a bit of a like, um, stuff going on, like, yeah, <laughs> there is, like, there is. I'm, I'm, like, I'm, going, I'm, going to be, I'm going to really like you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, like, it's like, there's that whole thing where it's a small place, you know what I mean? And if somebody, I've heard this before, like, somebody <laughs> writing a review, like, you know, we can't see that, like, you know, they're my kids. <laughs> and that happens, like, so they write this kind of half arse, like, sort of nice without being too nice, you know, kind of review. When you see them a lot, like, you know, it's kind of like you kind of either want people to be straight in the middle, or else, you know, like, say you really like it, say you really don't like it, you know what I mean? But there is a lot kind of, you know, running around in the middle of it because it's your, your girlfriend's friend or something, you know. And, that happens a lot, I think. You know what I mean? It's that kind of, that's that kind of niceness. But I think people should be afraid of, you know, any kind of criticism. You've got to take it as constructive criticism. You know, if somebody thinks that a song you've written or an EP you've done is absolutely shockingly shy, then that's the one person's opinion. You know, and you kind of learn that over like the space of ten years. Like kind of when you start reading reviews and stuff, and if you get a bad review. That's your whole week ruined. You know, you're just like, oh man. And then you realise that's one person's pair of ears. Like that is one person's opinion. And you kind of like you gradually get to be you're okay with it, you know? So I think people should be you, you either like it or you don't like it, you know, kind of don't be nice for the sake of other people, you know, give your give your proper opinion about stuff, you know. Let's, let's, let's kind of like we turn to a couple more kind of uh, those topics to, before, before we close. And you, like I me, mean, I think you mentioned earlier on the end, but like you know, about you, you kind of said like, uh, as a side, you know, about gigs and festivals. Well, didn't mention festivals, so about gigs and getting paid and all that. I mean, this has been one thing which has been rattling around the, 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 the online this year. Every time I kind of like, it, like it, it's bands not getting paid, bands doing gigs for free, bands being forced by festivals to do gigs for free, bands who think that they, they shouldn't say no but do the gig for free. How do you come across this? Is it growing? I mean, oh, you're all not okay. Who wants to start? Um, well, well, I have to. I have to get a job. Cause I can't afford to do it anymore, really. So, um, uh, yeah, like I mean, it just got to a point where, like, just for petrol costs and stuff, like, you know, like I had to kind of say no to. I had to say no to a couple of like festivals like last year, um, which feels terrible because you're like that's you know exposure. People are going to see it. It's something you can't pay bills like exposure. I can't um, afford it, like I literally could not afford it. So that feels terrible. I was against like I mean they the weren't paying enough or was the kid weren't paying enough? There was anything? nothing, like it was I would end up it would end up costing me way too much money to go because it costs a lot to go to the festival anyway, just for the day to day like, you know. Um, um and just even getting there and that kind of stuff, like nothing was kinda of covered. So it just feel after a while of doing it for so long and doing it for nothing for so long, you I think you just get to a point where you just get okay, look, I feel like I'm being complete push over and you know I can't even like move out of my house so like I just need to you know what I mean like it's mm. just yeah. I don't know like if I went to bed the wrong way I don't know I, I think I just I got to a point where I, was, I wouldn't want to do it anymore so I was like you know and also even stuff like a couple of festivals I've gone to um, I'm walking around trying to find like a, a lock up area for my gear and mm. I, a couple of festivals I had my 2000 euro guitar in my tent just being like when they leave, like, uh, you know, what am I going to, you know, yeah. so that's, that's something that's, it's so upsetting because you're like, it's such a disrespectful thing and you're like, I just want someone to look at. Mm -hmm. That's such um, a simple thing to fix. Such a simple thing, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Such a simple And you said to around the festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's a thing regarding fees. It's something, it's something that like headers and ham sandwich have been conscious as well. <coughs> um, definitely, like, I mean, it's gotten, since we, we actually have a booker now, so it's gotten much better since we got a booker because he's a hard ass. So he's kind of like, he's kind of, you know, doing all that stuff we were before then. I mean, we, you know, you do gigs for free and then you get trapped. And then you get trapped because people hear that you've done gigs for free. And they go, well, why don't you do it for free cause? Like, it's great exposure, as you said. It's like, what I meant to do, exposure. Like, you know what I mean? So I'll stick it in the envelope there and I'll take it with me. You know? <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy that people, like, you pay an electrician to do a job, you pay a plumber to do a job. This is a job. We do a job. We, we're entertainers. You know what I mean? We, we get up on stage and we do a job. 
And people might look at them and go, yeah, or why can't I stand up on stage for half an hour or an hour? But it's like, we put in a lot of work when it comes to recording and writing, and like, it's, this is a huge thing for us. Like, why should we not get paid for it? Like, why should we not get Patrick? Mm. Patrick will need to drive to somewhere. Like, it's just nuts. Like, and it really bugs me. Um, because you just see, and you see, still see, you still see people being taken advantage of. And it's just not fair because it gives people the wrong idea of what it's meant to be, like, you know. Mm. And the thing, that, the thing that bugs me as well is that, especially when you go and gig in the country and stuff, cover bands, cover bands everywhere, every night. You <laughs> bet you, your ass that you're getting really good money for doing those yeah. gigs. And that's what bugs me, is because why, why, why would you pay an original band, you know? It's just, I just, it just really, that's, that really annoys me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think especially with festivals, it's like particular festivals that have been over the summer, there's been a lot of Irish bands, you know, on Facebook still saying, yeah, we're playing this festival, and you know that they're probably just getting, you know, passes in and not getting paid, or yeah. not getting anything. I remember in the past, like myself, and Eddie, when we started out getting off the gigs, and they were like, we're just we're giving them the cans and a place to camp here. Yeah. I'm like, like, we don't even really drink. Yeah. <laughs> like, how, you know, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. So, like, even now, like, I, every so often, for a couple of weeks, I get a message in from Mary from Mallow saying, will we come down and play her sister's birthday party? Pretty much up the night and yeah. enjoy all the drinks and food. Yeah. So. <laughs> And I know I could go back to Germany. I've, I've only really played in Germany and France um, and the UK a little bit. But like uh, in particular, like I just had amazing experiences in Germany. Like where, and I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my god, really? You're giving, like you're, you're you're putting me up in a hotel. Like, I can't believe it, you know. And like I was trying to act really cool about it, but like I just couldn't. Actually. And that was when I was like, God, oh, maybe I just need to move away. Um, but I, I love Dublin. I don't want to move away. So that's you know kind of where I had to make a decision. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that's when it really kind of hits you in the face. You're kind of like, okay, that's it's not really right, you know. Right. Final question for me, Matt. I'm going to show up for a couple of questions as well. Like I just want to end on kind of like I want to be kind of I want to, I want to be kind of positive, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. No, not that you have to be positive, be, this has been the best therapy, sorry, uh, conversation <laughs> of the entire week, the week so far. But like, what's been the best thing like, being, about being in Heather's, about being in Ham Sandwich, about doing it so much? What is the best thing, what's the thing that keeps you going back to the world? Live gigs. It's just plain live. So whether it's five people standing in front of you or a thousand people, it doesn't matter. Just getting up on stage, I think it's something that keeps you. Keeps you doing it, keeps you saying it all, you know, kind of just that kind of I guess you're kind of making other people happy. You know, when you look into a crowd and there's somebody like, you know, popping away or smiling that's you know, singing along, like that just makes it, it just makes your own your own week, you know, and kinda of, and that's what you just want to do week after week is just get up on stage and, and keep keep doing what you love to do, you know. I'd say the same, kind of I'm up on stage when you see people singing songs back to you. Or even like the odd thing, like someone sending you a message saying, you know, this song that you wrote had this effect on my life. And like, sometimes it's very easy to get sucked into like, oh, you know, you know what, what's going on. And like, you know, as I said, the song, songwriting for me, for me and Eddie anyway, can get quite tough. And when you get a message like that from someone saying, you know, well, you're writing what you wrote, Changed my life, or you know, took me out of a very dark place, it's like little things like that. And I guess getting to travel around and play to people who love music and meet loads of people, loads of people in different bands like you, lovely folk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the same, like, I mean, not to be like repetitive, but like that is a wonderful feeling when. Um, when someone does get in touch with you and say, like, you know, this, this lyric, this line you wrote, because for me, like, writing is therapy, like, you know, that's yeah. why I write, it's to help me through certain things. That's why my stuff is so depressing. 
But, um, <laughs> but like, uh, I don't know, I just, um, I think that's a really lovely thing. Or like, one of my songs came on my friend's shuffle like a little while ago when we were at a party and I was like, that's the greatest thing ever, you know? Like, just stuff like that, like little things to think that people actually do like what you're doing. I think that's, you know, a really lovely thing. And, and I do love, I love playing live, but I hate the, uh, the build up, the period before it, the hard, you know, stuff that is just too tricky. Like, it's just a lot of waiting around, but I just wish I could always be on stage playing, I mean. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, everything that they said. <laughs> but yeah, yesterday I, I played at like 10.30 and it was the longest day in the world. It was just like, I drank so much coffee and I just, just like pacing around. And when I got home, my legs were so sore from just like being jelly. Um, but yeah, it really is like, it's so nerve wracking and then you get up there and it's, I guess that's why everyone does it. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if you, you know, if you write a song about something that's quite traumatic or something that's happened in your life and then you do get those emails or those um, comments on YouTube or something, um, it's, it's kind of, it sounds really lame, but I guess um, something that's so special about it is it's like forming bonds between people that you've never met and like when you get that, get an email from someone you know, mate, you're like, like I wasn't even, I didn't even meet them, like I wasn't even particular, like I've never, I wasn't nice to them, I wasn't, they don't know me, they don't know me anything. <coughs> it's this cool moment where like something that you've written about in the, something that you wouldn't talk to your friends about, you might have one best friend that you talk about, this horrible thing, and then it's like, but then some reason you wrote a song and showed all of these people and then they've connected with you, so it's pretty sick. Cool, okay. Any questions from the audience before we uh, call it a day? Or have you heard it all? Wow, okay. I just have that one that I just feel yeah, really interested in. Just hearing all your thoughts there. But just in relation to uh, just a reason you use tools and not for us to come like the Pays Play. Mm -hmm. And you know, where not only a band can play for free, but in some venues if you're expecting fans uh, to play. So I just wonder what your opinion is on. That makes you go away and die a quick death. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that when we started out, I remember playing gigs and having to buy yeah. tickets. <laughs> and it was just crazy. It's just crazy. And I just, I'm really surprised that that's still going on. And any new bands that I speak to, they're like, oh, how do you, how do you do, like, how do you start out? Do ne never play, pay to play a gig. Never ever play to play. You should not be paying money. Get up on stage. No matter what somebody, some bullshit somebody gives you, you don't even give them a cent to get up on stage. You know, I think it's ridiculous that it's still happening. And uh, if you're a new band, you can be taken advantage of quite quickly and quite easily. You know what I mean? So I think uh, when you're starting out, you need to just have your wits about you. And somebody asks you to pay to play gig, no thank you. You know, it's the best way to go about it. Like, and then slowly these people won't be able to put gigs on anymore. And that's the whole thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Yep. So, what do you think you would propose? Because um, I've been, what you've been saying today is what I've been, I'm not a musician, but I could, I like music a lot, but I do see that, that weird troubles that you guys, that musicians have nowadays. It's, and I feel like, like back in August, how the whole industry is very top heavy, meaning, the further you are from, the, from creating the music, the less you're actually getting paid. And I find that very ironic. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. And how. And. Um, yeah, I forget what was one saying. <laughs> but it's like, what do you think you could propose for that? Like, um, less it, oh, yeah. Because it's like, also like now in, in the digital age, it's like, you would think like music would be more democratic and like it would be easier to do more music disco discography. Yeah. Uh, but why is it still like a problem with the, in that sort? I don't know, it's like, I think it's just, I think the way people listen to and play for music is just going to constantly evolve anyway, you know what I mean? And I think, um, like, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's very hard to make money from anything physical nowadays, you know what I mean? So it is kind of going towards you know, everything is digital now and kind of stuff online. So I think people being, and people are constantly being innovative about how they sell their music online. I think the control, I think bands need to take the control back 
so they can make money from it. You know, I think was it Tom York recently kind of done something? He released an album Big Torrance, and it, on BitTorrent. I mean, he like that's his money. Like people that pay that money to get that BitTorrent, that's his money. I think you need to gradually need to look at kind of taking the middleman up a little bit more. You know, because by the time you put an album up on, you know. I think it's TuneCore we use or something like you're paying percentages to the the right. website and to the people who are selling this for you, you know, and you're you're getting bar barely anything back off of. Do you know what I mean? So I think if and it, what I think is changing, I think people are realizing there are ways around this now, and there are ways that musicians can take back control of their music, which is rightly so, like, you know, definitely. Final question, me, because I know we, we need to wrap up. But I, I, actually, last question. What? Sorry about that, I'm being really kind of a, a chairman esque here. Is there any question you wish you'd been asked today at this particular therapy <laughs> centre? No, excellent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I want to get a huge round of applause, please, because it's been fantastic. <laughs>